Dear students, Namaste. Welcome to class six. Let us start first chapter in computer, computer fundamentals. In this chapter, we are going to learn about IPO cycle in detail. Inside the computer, that is CPU, role of memory in working of computer, main memory, and classification of computers. A computer can perform a variety of functions as per the instruction given to it. Instructions consist of useful facts or figures. These facts or figures are called data. Data is provided to a computer through any of the input devices like keyboard or mouse, etc., depending on the type of data. Computer can process data with the help of IPO cycle. Let us understand about IPO cycle. We know computer works by following the input process output cycle that is IPO cycle. Computer first takes data as input, process it according to the given instructions, and then gives an output. During the IPO cycle, computer needs memory for the following two purpose. First, to store data instruction given to processing device. This type of memory should be fast. Second, to store result or output that is data or information or input data or instruction for future use. These type of memory should save data permanently. Our computer functions using IPO cycle. The IPO cycle has three stages. The first stage is called input stage. In this stage, data and instruction are provided to the computer through input devices. Input devices may include the keyboard, mouse, scanner, magnetic ink reader, etc. The second stage is called the process stage. In this stage, the processing device, that is the CPU, carries out the calculation or comparison on the given data. The third stage is called the output stage. In this stage, output is produced after processing. The output is given out or shown on an output device such as monitor, printer, projector, and plotter. The storage of data can either be in the main memory, that is the primary memory of the computer, or in the secondary memory devices. Let me explain you IPO cycle. Data instruction are input from input devices. These data or instruction can and either go directly for processing or it will first save in primary memory and then it will go for processing. After processing, the result, that is output, will be displayed in output devices and either may be saved in secondary memory for future use or it may be saved in RAM to be used in the instruction to follow. In this way, the cycle is formed. So it is known as IPO cycle. Working of CPU. The CPU is a small hardware component. It is called the brain of a computer. It works as follows. CPU takes data and instruction that is input given by the user. CPU performs some operations on data based on the instructions and produces the result. CPU transmits the result depending on the instruction either to memory or to an output device. For example, in instruction print 4 plus 5, CPU will display 9 directly in monitor after processing. In instruction print 4 plus 5 plus 6, CPU will first add 4 plus 5, saves the answer 9 in memory, it can be the cache memory or registers, and again take 9 as input and perform 9 plus 6. Now it will display 15. Here registers are not in a syllabus and will not be discussed. For detail, you can Google it. Components of CPU. The CPU has Two main components, arithmetic and logical unit, also known as ALU. 
It is responsible for all type of calculations and operations. As its name indicates, it performs arithmetic operations such as plus, minus, multiplication, division, and logical operations such as less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, and not equal to. Second component is control unit. It is responsible for controlling and guiding the instructions, the interpretation, and execution. Here we are going to see the working of CPU, ALU, and CU. CU fetch instruction from memory and interpret instructions. Suppose instruction says to input two numbers as data and multiply them. CU will wait for the two numbers to be entered by user from the keyboard, that is input device, to the memory. From memory, CU will send this entered data to ALU for multiplication, that is processing. The ALU performs the calculation and CU will send result back to the memory. Then CU will then send the result from memory to the output unit. After the execution of the instruction is over, so you will fetch the next set of instruction from memory. memory. Main memory, it is used by CPU to run the computer. It is also known as primary memory or internal memory. It consists of random access memory, RAM, read-only memory, ROM, and cache memory. And second type of memory is secondary memory. In the next few slides, we are going to see the role of memory in the working of a computer. RAM, random access memory. It forms a major part of main memory. The CPU can read data from it and also can write data onto it in a very short time. It is a temporary type of memory as it erases all the data when the computer is turned off. For this reason, RAM is also called volatile memory or temporary memory. Before a computer can run anything, either an application or a game or a software, the related data, instructions, and programs from the hard disk had to be loaded in the RAM to hold them temporarily. This is why RAM is also known as the working memory. Read only memory. The CPU can only read the data from it. The CPU uses its data for the computer to start up. It tells the computer what to do after you switch it on. It is a permanent memory system as the data and content once written to it remain fixed. The contents never change even if the computer is turned off. This is the reason ROM is also called non-volatile memory. Types of ROM. First, programmable read only memory known as PROM. In this type of ROM, the content of memory can be written or programmed only once. Second, erasable programmable read only memory, EPROM. A programmable read only memory on which data can be erased by exposure to strong ultraviolet light and can be rewritten later is known as EEPROM. Third one, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM. A programmable read-only memory on which data can be erased electrically and can be electrically rewritten later is known as EEPROM. Cache memory. Cache memory is a high-speed memory that is present between the CPU and the main memory, as shown in the figure. It is located at the place from where the content can be picked up by the CPU very quickly. Cache memory helps in improving the performance speed of the CPU as the commonly used data and instruction are stored in it. Next few slides, we are going to see classification of computers. Computers. A microcomputer is defined as a computer working on a single microprocessor. These are used by a single person at a time. 
desktop computers or personal computers used in offices, schools, homes, etc. are microcomputers. Mini computer. Mini computers have more processing power as compared to microcomputers. They are generally used as servers and are multi-user system. A large number of input and output devices can be attached. Mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are the computers that are very large and expensive computers. These computers have a very large memory and can store even more data as compared to mini computers. More than a hundred users can be connected through mainframe computers. The IBM system Z9 is an example of a mainframe computer. Supercomputers. Supercomputers are the most powerful in terms of processing speed and memory. They can execute billions of instructions per second. They are very expensive. They are used for scientific research, weather forecasting, underground studies, etc. Creative and IBM's Blue Gene are examples of supercomputers. This is all for today. In the next class, we are going to see the next chapter. Till then, study well and be healthy. Bye. Thanks for your patience hearing.